Caddis Maximus here, this time with a quick video on how to replace cord ends on things such as power cables, uh, extension cords, etc. Or replacing the plugs. This time we're actually going to do the receptacle. I'm going to do both ends on this extension cord, but we'll just do the receptacle in the video. These are to be the same procedure on what, <laughs> regardless of whether you're replacing a plug or replacing a receptacle on an extension cord. There's quite a few videos. These are some of the earlier videos. There's 10 year old videos on YouTube about how to do this. And I actually watched several of them and they didn't quite hit on some of the aspects I'd like to hit on in this video, as well as I like high quality stuff. So we're going to be replacing them with these specification grade, uh, leveted Leviton, uh, I believe these are armored, but these are the grounded metal cat, uh, type plugs, and I really do like them, and I also like the cord pinch on them. They seem to work pretty well. Now, these are indeed pretty nice, both these Levitons. We have the other side here. One thing to notice on a high-quality one is they use solid, uh, or excuse me, solid prongs, which is a big deal, versus ones that are uh, folded sheet metal, which are much weaker. These are a nice alloy and a nice thick, heavy-duty ground lug. This is a high contact ground because you can see it actually has the D shape versus just being a round lug. It has two wide flats to really get good contact in the receptacle. I really like these, but it's also a toss up between those. Excuse me here. And then uh, my other option, here's an older, newer, we're going to be Hubble uh, hospital grade uh, plugs. And I have a receptacle. Hospital grade is known as being some of the best. And then when you get Hubble hospital grade, you have some of the best of the highest grade but I actually like to save those for real special occasions because these are kind of spendy but these Hubble hospital grades are known as being some of the very best cord ends you can physically buy but I've also had really good luck with these armored ones and for an extension cord where the plug ends are really going to get beaten around a lot uh, I prefer to use these so the aspects that I wanted to cover about this is one uh, a lot of people use a a utility knife to actually cut this outer insulation. I've always had uh, hit and miss because oftentimes I do end up nicking the insulation on one of the inner wires. So this time I'm actually going to use a small pair of little cutters to cut it away. It would be the longer process, uh, but you don't unless you're replacing cord ends for a living, it's not a big deal. The second thing a lot of people do is they don't always cut away the cord packing, which is what you're supposed to do. And thirdly, and most importantly, was one of the aspects of and we'll go ahead and get this open here, is orientation of the wire. Now, when you have a power cord coming out of a tool or an appliance or something, the manufacturers don't always get it consistently. Also, this issue I'm going to talk about only really applies to three conductor because two conductors don't really have much of a problem. But when you have receptacles, we'll use this Hubble because it uses a shiny and a brass plug. But when you plug something in, uh, at least in North America, you have a wide and you have a narrow. The narrow it's, is the black wire, what's known as the hot, and then the wider one is known as the neutral. Now, what often happens is the is you'll pull off the end of the cord, maybe you're doing both ends, and in the back of this, since we know that that's the hot, that would be on the left-hand side. So in this case, we want the black wire in the left hand hole, let me make sure I have this oriented, the neutral in the right hand hole, and of course ground in the bottom hole. But what happens is, is as these are wound, on the other end this is reversed, the black and the white are reversed. So if you were to use the, and this extension cord was assembled properly, if I were to put the receptacle on the other end of the cord, in order to get the ground to face downwards, the black and the white would be on the wrong sides, and I'd have to twist them over themselves to get them into the back of the plug, which is a bad idea. So you always want to make pay attention that you're actually putting the receptacle on the proper end of the cord. It's surprising to think of a piece of three-conductor wires having a front and a back, but it does, and it make, makes a difference when you're replacing the cord ends. I have a flashlight here and I wanted to show inside what makes a real nice cord end is you can see the heavy duty plates. You can see on the uh, hot side where it's a folded over piece of metal and there are two ridges that press against uh, the flat inner plate. That's really what makes a high quality plug. Whenever you look inside plugs, usually it's uh, just a couple of pieces of metal that go on to each side and oftentimes on extension cords, it's even worse. It's actually a piece of sheet metal with a slot stamped into it and they make a terrible connection. And even on 12 gauge extension cords like this, it's real surprising that they do that. 
this type of a cord end is very stiff, especially when you use a standard uh, or a specification. It, you can, it really holds on tight. It's hard to show in the video, but it's surprising. And you always get a nice solid connection. So we'll just go ahead and strip this wire. You will want to strip as little as possible. And that's always one of the tricks to these is just getting barely enough. Because one of the issues, and I've always found as a personal pet peeve, is how often cord ends are replaced and just too much uh, wire has been stripped. Too much of the outer insulation has been cut down. And really, it's not much. We're all... we're that's probably optimal right there to tell you the truth and so I'll just go around with this pair of cutters and just snip this off this will only take a second here it's always a little funky doing it this way well it gives you a lot of control this isn't a bad cord it uses like polyester packing which is actually pretty strong um, this cord could really take a lot of pull out force And we'll get the rest of that cut off. We have just some paper. And then the big deal is you have to take all this cord packing. All this packing material has to come out of here. So you want a nice sharp little set of cutters. A lot of people don't do this. But really it's what you're supposed to do. You don't want all this packing just being in there and getting all in your way. And the polyester packing, once again, is actually pretty strong. This is a kind of cord that you could actually hang off of use it as a rope you don't really want to do that but it's nice and these cutters aren't the sharpest and now we have our three little conductors now we want to strip these now you can use the strip masters the automatic wire strippers but since you have so little space uh, it's difficult to do that so we'll go ahead and use a traditional set here we'll use my green lace the second thing to pay attention to is most of these plugs, like this one, they actually have a strip gauge, which tells you you're supposed to match the wire up. And there's our gauge, and you can see that you actually want quite a bit of the wire stripped. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. Maybe about a half an inch of wire. This will be at the largest capacity. When you, use, I found when using these style cutters that I actually don't pull on the wire when I cut them I just cinch down like that and this I really like to try to not have any broken strands so this is really how you use these when you use these to to cut and then to actually pull off the insulation like nice ones like these green leaves are ground and they're just so sharp that they'll cut strands of the wire as you try to pull it off so then a little usually a little twist will get these to cooperate I'll try using a little plier ends here come on now just a second all right turns out I just need to hit these from a couple different angles so that would be the additional tip is to cut and then rotate it like 90 degrees and then do another cut right at the same spot just to make sure you get through Oh, great, these <laughs> locked on there. Well, that's not a good... Now I see why they don't put thumb switches in those particular places. Now if I can get this thing off of here. And you just have to get a good grip with the pliers. So now we're going to pay attention to which direction they're actually twisted. Now this looks like I've removed quite a bit of insulation here. Let me get this... I wish this would focus a little better. There we go. We'll want to go ahead and twist these in the same direction. Now it looks like I removed way too much. Now let's take a look at our... Let's get the focus going. Come on. But if we look at our strip gauge, I'm just a little bit long on the ground. On the neutral you can see, okay, so I'm just a touch long. But it's actually pretty surprising. And on the black... So I'm just a hair long on these, which is really, that's just fine, but it's surprising how much you do need to uh, remove. So the second thing that you need to do is kind of get them in, well, 
after we've done that and before you forget you've got to slide this over the end of the cord so we'll go ahead and loosen up the cord pinch here and we'll open up these screws you know almost all the way so we have plenty of space it's always disappointing when you get it all put together and you forgot to put the inner shell over the cord so let's go ahead and get that in here there we go we had one strand kind of get caught up the next thing we're going to do is use these to kind of pre-bend this now what shape do we want because this is a little bit odd And then the ground is actually really close. It's down in this area. I'm going to twist those back up so it'll be easier to deal with. And the reason we're doing that is to try to make it a similar style fork so that it's easy to get into the end of this cord end. And that's the other issue is people, so many times I've taken these apart and off of power tools where people have just jam these in there and it's just strands are hanging out everywhere and that's the worst case scenario you don't want to have a strand sticking off to the side that may come into contact with something you don't want it to a lot of times these are actually tight which they are in this case so you'll want to make sure those are loosened up you just use a very light amount of force these types of the screws and the way these systems are designed they'll tend to stop at their fully open position so you don't have to worry about a screw uh, falling out or anything like that so now that we're correct, we can see that our neutral is going to be on this side. Our hot's going to be the short, the black one's going to be in the short side. And of course, the ground's going to be in the bottom. And it's always kind of interesting getting these in here. Especially when it's 12 gauge, because that tends to be the maximum size. Look, bent that one over. It's always an adventure getting 12 gauge into these things. Uh, a real adventure if you ever try to put 110 volt. A receptacle on a 10 gauge then it gets really special and it just all this will just barely fit in here sometimes you have to just get one started like so kind of back it out a little bit and try to just get these others to And we can see it's really, this is the most difficult part. And this is why a lot of people just don't do a very good job because it actually takes some finesse getting these wires lined up just right, especially on a 12 gauge extension cord and getting them all in there without having, uh, you know, making sure every single strand is uh, actually properly inserted. And I just had to spend a moment concentrating on that, but you really just have to get the shape just right. And see, I may have even stripped a little too much of this outer insulation, but I should be okay. And the reason it's a big deal is because the whole back end cinches up so close to the front end that you basically only need just enough wire to actually be able to successfully get it into those holes without having strands get bound up everywhere and still be able to have enough meat with the cord packing so the cord pinch can actually hold it on. So in this situation where I do, I try to do is I try to get this force one in, say the ground is in the deepest, and I'll just give that a light tightening just to kind of hold it in place with the Phillips. And these are a situation where I also have a slot head. All these screws that I've ever seen are both Phillips and slot head. And one nice advantage of slot head is when you need to apply a lot of force to a fastener, it's far better than a Phillips because of just the straight slot. So now that we've done that, I'll come over to the hot side and I'll kind of press the plug in to make sure that it has a nice tight fit. And then we'll just cinch that down a little bit just to get it to hold. And then of course we'll do the same thing for the last one. We'll make sure that's pushed down nice and deep in there. And give that a little cinch. And then you don't want to leave it quite like that. These actually need to be surprisingly tight. But you can tell you have a good job because it's close. And then the insulation is actually really nicely inset in there. Now we'll use the slot head screwdriver to really get plenty of force on these connectors. So much easier because you don't have to press down so hard. You can just focus on 
keeping it in the fastener and just giving it a nice torque. So this is slot head is actually still pretty good and many and this is one of the special situations where it just I'm able to easily get all the torque I need. No worries about the quality of these connections. I can get as much force as I think the screw threads would take. And so I cinch those down pretty good. Let me get that shell. And what's interesting is the shell, there's a little copper plated spring. It presses against a little tab right there and that's how it grounds the shell. There's also a little notch here. And you want to pay attention to that. A lot of cord ends do have an orientation. There's a little slot that it fits in. So you know that you're actually getting it correct. It just sits in there like that. And then we'll just take and tighten down these three screws. You don't want to torque these too much, but you want to make sure they're in there good and tight. And so that's all it was. It actually took a surprising amount of time to do that. But now we are all finished and we have a very nice heavy duty cord end on this now. Oh, we're not quite done. We do need to, of course, do the cord pinch. But what we can see is that the cord and the full depth of the cord goes into the shell. So now we know we have a real nice solid uh, situation, a, a solid a uh, section of the cord to hold these or for the cord pinch to grasp on would be the better way to put it and depending on the diameter of the cord you may you kind of have to balance you want it to really hold good sometimes I make sure it's pushed in nice and solid but generally speaking you do want this to be pretty tight you want it to in the case that you trip over the cord or anything like that that it will come unplugged and since this is a high grade plug you really want to make sure this is pinched down nice and tight another thing to mention on these type of levitons here is this little cup kind of sits in a recess and it doesn't always want to get in there level so sometimes when you're pushing this down you actually have to tap on the end of it to get it to really seat in the shells um, and it's something to be aware of whenever using these armored cord ends So even on a 12 gauge, so on, there's many situations where if you were just choosing to put a, this style on a smaller 16 gauge extension cord, for instance, uh, you need some layers of shrink wrap um, in order to get the wire to be large enough to really work in these kind of terminals here. Or excuse me, not terminals, but in this, the cord pinch or strain relief. And it looks like we're actually getting pretty good here. And then I like to make sure that they're balanced, so maybe a little bit more on this side. And we should be good. And voila, that's the end of this quick cord replacement video. It wasn't as quick as I thought it would be, but... This is probably not something that uh, would be real applicable so many to my subscribers since a lot of my subscribers uh, are already familiar with doing this kind of operation. Maybe some people would find it helpful, but this is more for the general population to really show, yeah, it takes a few minutes, maybe 15 minutes to do it properly. Uh, but in this case, we have just an excellent replacement. This is solid, reliable. You know that there isn't any broken strands, so it's going to deliver the full power. And it's a cord end that will really last until the wire fatigues right here. Usually these cord ends can get tremendously beaten up. And what the worst case scenario is they get, you know, slung against the ground and it may break this end cap. But that's about the, the only thing you would ever have to worry about. Otherwise, I've seen these kind of ends get run over and just take the harshest abuse. So it's nice because usually these will still have life in them. So you can just cut the cord off when it gets too strained and then just move it on down. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching, and please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.